Flash of Korea. The Korean nation wants peace. But the United States is making a challenge to it and persisting in its policy to stifle the Democratic People's Republic of Korea with nuclear weapons, thereby putting the Korean Peninsula under further aggravated nuclear war danger. The denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, a focus question in the world today, was in fact proposed and actively promoted by the DPRK. An official of the Korean Central News Agency says, Now the nuclear issue in Korea has become a worldwide question. It is not an issue that arose of late. The DPRK joined the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1985 but failed to conclude the safeguards accord with the International Atomic Energy Agency because of the repeated nuclear threats of the U.S. The primary purpose of the affiliation in the NPT by the DPRK in December 1985 was to do away with the nuclear threats of the U.S. and solve her electric power issue with nuclear energy. But the DPRK's honest implementation of her obligations in the treaty was met by further increased nuclear threats of the U.S., endangering peace and security. If there had been full implementation of the DPRK-U.S. agreed framework, a basic legal document for the settlement of nuclear issue signed by both sides in October 1994, the issue would have been settled squarely. The bellicose Bush administration, however, rejected DPRK-US dialogue from the beginning and even declared a nuclear war against the DPRK, thus totally destroying the basis of the agreement. The Bush group designated the DPRK as a target of preemptive nuclear attack, and when the DPRK set forth a non-aggression treaty overture, they made a brigandish demand that the DPRK give up her nuclear program first. The DPRK had to respond to it by quitting the NPT on January 10, 2003. It was just action fully corresponding to the rights under the treaty. destroying the denuclearization progress in the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. makes preposterous sophistry that the large aggressive armed forces and nuclear weapons they have brought into South Korea are a guarantee for peace on the Korean Peninsula and regional stability. The nuclear issue in Korea originated in 1957 when the U.S. began to bring lethal nuclear weapons into South Korea. The U.S., the first nuclear nation and greatest mass destruction weapon possessor in the world, made public a defined nuclear war theory allegedly to use tactical nukes only in a definite region. The U.S. officially designated the Korean Peninsula as the first target of its application and desperately tried to realize it.
The U.S. deployed in South Korea even the neutron bombs, otherwise called weapon of devil, that had been rejected in Europe and many other countries in the first half of the 1980s. The neutron bomb deployment further aggravated the nuclear issue of the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. has deployed more than 1,000 nukes in South Korea, that is, one nuke per 100 square kilometers, four times higher in density than in Europe. The U.S. officially announced the start of nuclearization of its forces in South Korea on July 15, 1957, deployed 280mm atomic guns and Honest John nuclear missiles in 1958, and brought in over 1,000 nuclear weapons and 54 nuclear aircraft in 1975. Since then, the U.S. has regularly shipped tactical nuclear weapons and bombs into South Korea. Even the depleted uranium bullets were introduced in 1997. South Korea was thus converted into nuclear arsenal of the U.S. in the Far East. The Korean people condemned the U.S. nuclear war plot aimed at annihilating the entire Korean nation. With a firm determination to punish the aggressors, the Korean army and people built a powerful war deterrent force. People took arms not to repeat the tragic past when they, with no power to defend themselves, had been reduced to colonial slaves of the Japanese. The DPRK emerged with a single-minded unity of the leader, the party and the people as a citadel of self-reliant defense, all the people armed and the whole country fortified. On the other hand, the DPRK government sent reasonable proposals to U.S. administration and the Congress more than once in order to remove the nuclear danger. She also put forth many constructive and practical proposals to prevent a nuclear war by means of national cooperation. The DPRK strongly urged the U.S to pull out nuclear missiles, atomic guns and all other nukes from South Korea and pungently denounced operation plans for the use of nuclear weapons. The DPRK's earnest efforts brought about a joint declaration on denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula on January 20, 1992. DPRK-US high-level talks took 
place in January 1992 at the U.S. Mission to the United Nations. At the talks, the U.S. firmly promised to commit itself not to threaten the DPRK with nuclear arms and agreed to cessation of their team spirit nuclear war exercises and withdrawal of nuclear weapons from South Korea. The DPRK accordingly agreed to the conclusion of the Nuclear Safeguards Accord with the IAEA and its inspection. The DPRK subsequently opened to the international public its peaceful nuclear activities, though she was in a special state as she had temporarily suspended the effectuation of her withdrawal from the NPT, which was decided in March 1993. For the peaceful settlement of the nuclear issue of the Korean Peninsula, the DPRK held expert-level negotiations with the U.S. on several occasions. The DPRK repeatedly expressed her will to safeguard the national sovereignty and make positive efforts to defend peace in Asia and the rest of the world. The DPRK's strong countermeasures to remove a nuclear war danger led to the reopening of DPRK-US talks in Geneva, Switzerland, which resulted in the adoption of DPRK-US Framework Agreement on October 21, 1994, for full settlement of the nuclear issue of the Korean Peninsula. It was a fruition of the sincere endeavor of the DPRK which had proposed denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and made all efforts for its realization. This notwithstanding, the Bush group, like a thief crying for a thief, desperately tried to internationalize the nuclear issue of Korea, clamoring that North Korea trampled upon denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Earlier in the 1990s, the U.S. had steered ex-director Hans Blix and others in the IAEA to kick up a racket for special inspection of two military objects in the DPRK, thereby bringing about a touch-and-go situation in the area. Meanwhile, the U.S. more frantically staged reckless nuclear test war games designed to launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the DPRK. The U.S. wanted to bring the DPRK to its knees through its nuclear war programs, such as 9-Day War Plan, 5-Day War Plan, Operation Plan 5027, Operation Plan 5027-98, and Accident Plan, and nuclear war exercises such as Team Spirit, Ulji Focus Lands, Fall Eagle, and RSOI. As is recorded in history, Truman, the nuclear maniac and mass murderer of the 20th century, who had issued the first order to use the nuclear bombs, and thus caused a holocaust in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, examined a plan to drop atomic bombs during the Korean War in the 1950s. But its bluff resulted in shameful defeat of the U.S. and victory of the DPRK. It was a ruthless response of the young Korea to the alleged almighty U.S.
the Korean War fought in the 1950s was the beginning of the U.S. downhill. Another war in Korea may lead to a complete ruin of the U.S. The successive U.S. administrations have been clinging to nuclear blackmail on the DPRK only to suffer defeat. The Pueblo incident in January 1968 is a salient proof of it. The then U.S. President Johnson threatened the DPRK with a nuclear retaliation and sent to the East Sea of Korea huge aggressive forces including nuclear aircraft carrier Enterprise. They ran amok as if to trigger off a war immediately. But the DPRK gave them her determined answer to return retaliation for retaliation and all-out war for all-out war. Afraid of the invincible spirit of Korea based on strong power, the U.S. could not but go back. But for the strong power of the DPRK, they would have broken out scores of wars already on the Korean Peninsula. What was the answer of Korea in the large spy plane East Sea 1 to 1 incident and other showdowns? It was that whoever, trespassing even upon the smallest bit of the sacred land, sea and sky of Korea, will be dead. The Washington warmongers, however, cried that they would not wait for Korea to collapse, but accelerate it even by using nuclear weapons. In the first year of the Bush administration, the scale of nuclear war exercises against the DPRK was twice as large as that in 2000, the last year of the Clinton administration involving nearly 700,000 troops. The world public denounced the U.S. for the nuclear war danger on the Korean Peninsula. They branded the moves of the U.S. as a criminal act of leading the situation to a war a reckless fireplay and mad and indiscreet act. The Korean people have loved peace and want to live harmoniously in a nuclear-free world. The Korean army and people firmly believe that peace is defended only by the arms. Under the grim situation caused by the historical U.S. maneuvers to bring down socialism in Korea, it is her sovereign right to build a powerful defense industry to cope with it. Nobody can speak ill of it. Korea, that launched the satellite Kwang myung sung No. 1 and is dynamically advancing toward an economic power, has a powerful military deterrence. Leader Kim Jong-il, chairman of the National Defense Commission of the DPRK, 
has built this bulwark of national defense to safeguard the entire nation with his sanguine policy. The powerful military capability prepared under the Sun-Gun leadership is an iron shield for the Korean nation, removing the war crisis, but a merciless iron hammer to the aggressors. In May 1999, the U.S. administration, learning that their stick policy would not work, sent Perry, the former U.S. Secretary of Defense, as a special presidential envoy to the DPRK. Korea then solemnly proclaimed, Since the U.S. threatens us ceaselessly, we strengthen military power to defend ourselves. The U.S. must make a complete change in its policy toward Korea before it asks for the discontinuation of our nuclear and missile development. That is the only way to solution. Visiting the DPRK in 1994, Jimmy Carter, the former U.S. president, called for the negotiated settlement of the acute nuclear issue. Albright, the then U.S. Secretary of State, during her sojourn in Pyongyang in October 2000, also pledged to implement the DPRK-US agreed framework. The Bush group, however, slandered the promises made by the Clinton administration as a mistake, inflicting a loss on the U.S. while benefiting the DPRK. They totally denied his predecessor's letter of assurance and other official documents, thereby laying an obstacle in the way of the improvement of DPRK-US relations. Regarding it as a thorn in the flesh that the Korean people were advancing toward reunification under the banner of the June 15 Joint Declaration adopted during the 2000 Inter-Korean Summit, the U.S. drove a wedge into North-South relations and laid a stumbling block in the way of dialogue, cooperation and national collaboration. They even stopped the shipping into the DPRK of heavy oil that had been supplied under the DPRK-US Framework Agreement. So. Korea had to operate again the nuclear facilities of her atomic power plant. They went so far as to make a piratical raid on peaceful trading vessels of Korea in the high seas. Amid the dark needs a stick, so do the aggressors. It is the logic of righteous strength that they should be dealt a heavy blow by force. Take a lesson from the Iraqi war, the belligerent Bush administration carried out in defiance of the United Nations and the world public. It shows the truth that one step concede will lead to ten, and honest compliance with the demand of the U.S. for disarmament through inspection will not prevent a war but give rise to it instead. Witnessing the miserable reality of Iraq, the world public recognizes the justness of the firm stand of Korea that she should possess a nuclear weapon, and even something greater than that if possible to resist the intensified U.S. moves against her.
the U.S. made public a preemptive nuclear attack on the DPRK as their policy in March 2002. It totally blockaded the way to denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. Government statement of the DPRK. It is the U.S. that disturbs peace and security on the Korean Peninsula and leads the situation to a dangerous state today. Since its advent, the Bush administration has designated us as part of an axis of evil. It proclaimed it as its state policy to deny our system and designated our country as a target of preemptive nuclear attack, which means an open declaration of a nuclear war against our country. The statement declared the automatic effectuation of the withdrawal of the DPRK from the NPT that had been temporarily suspended as long as necessary according to the DPRK-US joint statement of June 11, 1993. All the Korean army people who had been patient aspiring after peace and happiness turned out in a resolute resistance for final settlement with the U.S. imperialists, their sworn enemy. Our country is a land of golden tapestry with beautiful mountains and clear rivers. I wonder why the U.S. so desperately attempts to bring nuclear clouds to this land and trample down the dignity and sovereignty of us the Sun's nation. If the U.S. triggers off a war on this land, our army and people will destroy the land of the U.S. and utterly eliminate the root of evil and war on this planet. The DPRK, too, has the right of choice and stick is not for the U.S. alone. Tougher to the tough and a gun to a rifle. That is the way Korea responds. The aggressors will never avoid death. The Korean People's Army has full capability to thwart what they call precision strike, strike in the manner of surgical operation and preemptive nuclear attack of the U.S. The Korean People's Army will return aerial strike with aerial strike and ground strategy with ground strategy. The Korean People's Army is a force of self-defense to safeguard the motherland and fellow countrymen, a symbol of great victory of the Army First policy and a reliable guarantee for peace on the Korean Peninsula. Korea is rallied rock firm behind leader Kim Jong-il and possessed of a strong defense power.
If the US sparks a nuclear war, Korea would deal a ruthless blow on the aggressors wherever they may be and round up the century-old showdown against the US.